Well, hello and welcome to The Wrap. This is a show running up all things Zwift from the last week. We're talking racing events, tech, fashion. We're live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and X. This is episode 91 on this Friday, April 19th, 2024. For special time for special guests. That's what the Friday stream is all about. Well, it's Friday for me. I think it's like 6 a.m. New Zealand time and uh, Friday, 1 p.m. Central time. This week, what are we talking about? Well, we've got a special guest. We've got Kevin O'Peel coming in from NZ Bro, Team NZ Bro. We're going to be talking, I think, a little bit about esports if we can prod something out of them, maybe a little bit. We'll also be talking about the NZ Remembrance Race. Uh, three years. Uh, the Anzac, excuse me, remember this race, uh, three years it's been running uh, this year. Opening up to international is interesting to hear. We're going to be talking about race number three for the ZRL playoffs next week. A cool format that's coming up for that. There's some surprise events that not a whole lot of people had known about. The XP Express, I think Anna needs to jump on those real quickly here. Update version 1.63. Not a big one, but a couple of little fun things in there uh the uh zwift click virtual now available for standalone purchase we'll be talking about that as well update on climb portals effects on xp farming oh man are we getting nerfed that's going to be an interesting one there's this 
really cool, actually, uh, community member Zwift original song. One of my viewers came in, we'll talk about that a little bit, and shared it with me. And I was like, this is actually really good. Now, I don't know if it was made by humans, though, which is also a whole other topic that we could maybe touch on uh, a little bit. The garage pick of the week is the 2024 spring training kit. Good kit. Training plan. Eh, maybe. Well, Let's get right down into it, though. As usual, what are what? To, oh, yeah, real quickly, everybody, this is a podcast as well. If you want to download the audio version, head over to Zwift Community Live.com slash podcast. You can find all the episodes there. After we are live, we do download it up usually within about 24 hours, or you can search Zwift in the wrap and find it just about anywhere that you do download your podcast. Let's get right on into it. As usual, we start with. What kind of type two fun have we been up to uh, in the last week? What's up, Anna? Hey, uh, I will first give a shout that, yeah, we will be kind of alternating times because we realized um, we kind of wanted to have guests on again. And a lot of American guests don't actually want to come on the show at midnight or one in the morning, which is when Nathan was recording in case people didn't know. So um, yeah, occasionally we'll alternate. So just keep an eye on the socials. We'll sort of have announced the guest. I've actually lined up maybe three now for certain dates coming up in May. So uh, yeah, occasionally back to our regular time. If it's just, you want to hear Nathan and I rabbiting on and then with guests, it'll be this time because it's a lot more palatable to come on at lunchtime, American time. <laughs> For most people, apart from Nathan. Uh, what I've been up to this week is a whole lot of TTTing. So we had the ZRL um, fine or semifinals um, race two, which was the TTT around the RGV course, which has got to be now like the most, one of the most used TTT courses. It is quite a good one though. And I feel like we've really nailed it, but I'll tell like a story because it was hilarious and go check out um, M Nyquist's reel that she did on it. Cause it kind of sums it up really well. So in the pen, you know, Were there any we're headbands like... highlighted? I just got to know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, but she was the only one not wearing headphones. So she felt like she wasn't like part of the crew cause she was still wearing her Alpine hat. Um, but it was great because yeah, we're in the pen. Um, we actually had the rider, uh, Penna. What's Penna's first name? Tiffany, from Avis. Tiffany. Tiffany. So Tiffany has been a trooper and turning up, even though none of her team is there. And she turned up for the TTT just to ride it as an individual solo. time trial. Like totally solo. Solo. Yeah, totally solo. So I said to her, look, why don't we just, once the banner drops, we'll just sit here for a minute and then just come ride with us. Like, who cares? We don't, you know, we're not really super phased. It'd be more fun. But she kind of didn't come back to us in time before the, the banner dropped. So we're kind of in the mode of like, oh, yeah. But I don't know what happens. Like I see red, Nathan, and the banner drops. And I'm like out of the gates, seven or eight watts a kg. And on, M, on M's reel, it's so funny. She's like, yeah, what pace are we holding here on the front? Are we doing like 48k an hour pulls? And Jen's response is classic. It's just, ah, uh, I don't know. No one really cares. Just do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so it just, it was like, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was one of the best TTTs we have ever executed. There were four of us up against six and we won by seven seconds. And that was against ATP. So an ATP crew of six versus us as four. And it was just phenomenal. Like seven seconds were up at Jenna's racing with like 12 stitches in her leg because she crashed at Redlands. Oh um, yeah, Redlands. she crashed at Redlands. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was phenomenal. The team just did amazing. Um, so that was just so cool. Such a highlight of the week. And then we did our um, Team Riot TTT uh, for the WTRL ones on Friday morning. So I get up at five o'clock and we jump on and we had a full suite team of eight. Uh, and I'm loving it. We've been doing it as like a team building thing. Uh, so it's been really cool. So we had a full team of eight, but we actually had quite a few who still wanted to race and they didn't have a team. So now we're splitting into two teams. So we've got a team that rides 45K an hour on the front and we've got a team that rides 40K an hour on the front. Uh, so yeah, the TTT. I like it that awesome. you do it on uh, speed. I like it that you're doing it on speed. Yeah. Now I know that that's 
not quite as manageable for the individual because it's kind of a random changing thing. You know, it changes here and there. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. But your goal, is that like a goal on the front? Like we're going to aim for hitting this? Is that what that is then? And um, then do you go over how, if you can or how does that work? Uh, we don't. So the way I tend to DS it, like if you're on the desert, right? Like if I see the speed isn't 45, I'm like, pick up the speed like it's it's not a goal like it's an it's aim like a, to go that, for yeah yeah it's like an aim to go doing. for yeah, and yeah. it's going to push the the crowd yeah in the last third so in the last third if we're feeling good i'm like let's push it up push it up to 47 and take shorter pulls but i definitely don't say that in the first half because i've done that before we've done that where we're like everyone's feeling great let's go 47 and then the last third of the race is just absolute carnage because you just can't hold anything and you're down to like trawling through it like 10 second pulls so yeah it's um i'm really digging the ttt's again though it's been like a lot of fun and also I raced out on my grav bike out on the road well on the grav last weekend and did a new route up in auckland it was just beautiful my descending is so shit it's just so bad. I really need to work on it. But um, I only have Wait, one so more like weekend. Of, your, your shoulders are okay to go and like, um, do all this stuff? Like, oh, you've been really lifting some weights? Like, what's going on here? Oh, okay. So I have never done so much weight training on my shoulders in my life. I'm doing three weight sessions a week on my shoulders. So my surgery is in 10 days. Getting and buffed. my 10-day goal, my 10-day <laughs> goal, I went to, but no kidding, I went back to the PT yesterday and he's like, Oh my God, like in two weeks, this is, you're strong, you're so much stronger than you were two weeks ago. I was like, I'm stronger than I've been in ages. I can like lift my bike onto the car. So I'm hoping, yes, yeah, so I have the surgery on May 1st and then it'll feel better. He said, it's okay to ride outside. I didn't quite say like gravel and I did notice on the gravel, the downhill bumping, I was like, it wasn't my shoulder that was sore, but it was all the muscles I was using to protect it. So like my back, my neck, you know, like, because it's obviously was tensing there. And so I got to the end and I was like, Ugh, like, it's not my shoulder, but everything's quite tight on that side. Um, but anyway, yeah, reconstruction soon. And I'll be back with like a vengeance. Got it done real quick. So I'll be good. I've been doing zone two on Zwift and we actually are able to get outside right now. It got into the sixties and seventies this past week. Um, but I, we have a way of being able to train together, um, where usually like in the past I've taken my road bike with Gabby and then now she's getting strong enough now though, that this may change because I'm looking at her threshold that I'm like, I don't know, Gabby, like you could do like 300 watts for a pretty long period of time. Like maybe I need to go back to the road bike here soon. But um, I jump on the mountain bike and then do my training. And we can like, if I'm on the mountain bike and she's on her road bike, we essentially can just do the same training sessions. Like it, it totally works fine. And um, so we did, but... I needed something more like an SST zone three, zone two ish, like in between ride for a long period of time. And she needed just a chill zone two. So like it was a really windy day. So she actually made this post. It was a copycat post though, but there was this awesome Instagram post that said for every, uh, boyfriend on the front pulling 400 Watts, there's a recovery ride girlfriend in the back hanging out. Right. And so like we made a similar post like that because I'm just like on the front hammering it. Like I'm literally doing 500 Watts on my mountain bike and Gabby's literally taking an Instagram smiling away. Like whatever, you know, like, oh my, oh my God. God, go check it out. It's pretty good little oh. post actually on, on Instagram. But, um, so that's what, what, you know, I think we did two solid days like that. One day was like almost four hours. And then the other day was like uh, a pretty a solid, like two hour. It was the next day though. So I think it was, I was a little bit, we were both like, oh man, that was a long day. Cause like, you're not quite used to the, even the environment yet, you know, the wind and the everything kind of coming. And also I got, I got pretty bad allergies and I completely stay away from antihistamines now because of how they impact performance and your ability to recover and all that kind of stuff. So like I've just stopped and I actually wonder 
if it's either honey and the fact that I just stopped taking antihistamines that my body's like, okay, fine, I'll deal with it. And that I'm slowly, like my allergies are not as bad as they used to be. And for the last year or two, I've just stopped antihistamines altogether, which doctors and pharmaceutical Do companies you, are going to absolutely love me for saying uh, that. <laughs> yeah, but your body is essentially can adapt, right? I personally think. But um, do you use a nasal rinse, like a saline? It's the only nasal thing rinse? that I do. The only thing I do do is yeah. I do still uh, when it gets really bad. I do have fluticasone sitting around from like uh, a prescription. Oh front. no, like yeah, just yeah. a. I got but introduced I do, to I this. Do it's gross. Yeah, I do you use, use a spray? I have used. No, that. this is like out, like a blah, like it. No, it's not a spray. Like, oh. Oh my god! It should try this. So you put water in. You have to get the thing. A neti you put pot. Water in it with like a. We call a it a neti thing, pot. I think. Squ you squirt it up one nostril and it goes up one and then down the other. Oh, maybe it's different. Oh wow, huh? And it's full water and it's like a full saline rinse. It's amazing. Doesn't it like come out your eyes? <laughs> like, doesn't it like? Ah! No, you think. <laughs> so you're leaning over and yeah, it goes up one and then down the other and it just totally like um rinses it all out it's my old coach swore by it and i started using it and, and it works? Like, it's real old school but it's good yeah really good like as soon as i start feeling like i'm getting a cold or something i'll start doing that it's yeah it's great with the allergies thing i thought about it and and like this is the first time because i've stopped doing it like my my solution is no longer and histamines all that kind of stuff so i I've been trying to find other solutions. And so I, this is the first time I've ever sniffed water, you know, I've ever, I've ever been like, all right, get the, as much water up my nose as I possibly can. And you've got this like hose. Just oh, put a hose next through level. It. <laughs> oh my gosh. Give it a try. You'll, it's very satisfying. I also raced shout out to jet, the jet, the Japanese crew are hardcore. I just got to say like, they are hardcore on Zwift. You show up to the jet morning training race or whatever that thing is. Good luck, everybody. Have fun with that. Wow. And they make these courses. It was like a custom course on Richmond reverse. And we did 42K. This is their morning ride. And like three times over the punchy climbs. And then the, the finish is right after the final climb on the reverse of, of governors. Oh. It was, I, I got done and the next day I couldn't pedal my zone two. And, oh my God. and I remember saying to Gabby, that was, is there something wrong with me? That was one of the hardest races I've ever done. <laughs> it was so crazy. But that jet crew, like whenever I was doing those big spins, I would look and there'd always be someone from jet there. And I was like, great we're gonna make it within 30 minutes <laughs> because like all you have to do they're so fast like you just jump on them and i remember in the france course lutici i think there were like four of them up the front i was like this is a dream for me i'm just sitting on this jet train so yeah like in that training race in that race in the race they do this thing where all of a sudden they're so they'll be speaking in japanese so the characters don't come through on screen. So there's just this little like white box and you're like, what are they saying? <laughs> you know, like there's secrets going on here. <laughs> what you're thinking, you know? And then they're like, and then all of a sudden there's like 3.0. Like there's be, all of a sudden it'll be a number three. And then twelve two five point something. <laughs> Okay, like what's going? And it's like they're not private messaging each other. I'm like, this is kind of intimidation factor or something. Like something's going on here. Oh my god! <laughs> this this is the awesome. jet mafia are going to take us down. <laughs> oh man, it was, it was good oh stuff. God, I, I really, re I really enjoyed that. And and the other cool thing was was it was it had the perfect kind of blend where they are obviously really competitive, but super fun respectful it felt like and so it remind that that attitude reminds me of um dojo it reminds me of being in the dojo when i was training karate that like that's where karate mm -hmm. comes from is japan is like the same attitude is like super high level of like intense respect but at the same time like really passionate and not so 
I don't know how to say it. like like it's just this right edge that they play on things I, that I really mm-hmm. enjoyed. Anyways, it was it was it was really really good. So so that's what I've been up to. All right, do you want to just uh, let's jump right down into our our guest? Bring on Kevin and Co. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we got uh, Kevin. Oh, I hope I'm saying it right. I ask him this every time that he comes on. It's been a little while since we've talked to Kevin. Uh, last time I think was about maybe some similar stuff. Um, Lindsay Bro have been doing some awesome. Uh, things on the platform for looks like over three years. One of the largest uh, clubs and race crews out there showed up on the scene majorly, I think, during both ZRL and the TTT and that they held, how they got on my radar. And then obviously, uh, I think you were inviting me to like a Kiri crew thing too, Anna, for a little while. So uh, yeah, good to have Kevin O'Peel. Am I doing that right? I hope. Help me out. That's close. Oh, it's close. Sorry. Close enough. <laughs> Yeah, Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Good to have you on, Kevin. No, How are you doing? Fine. How are you going? Yeah, very good, very good. Nice, nice early start. So yeah, happy to be here and um, yeah, discuss some things that have been happening with us. Right on. So, cool. yeah, we um, currently, I um, I'll ask you, Kev. Sorry. Yeah, go um, for it, Anna. I wanted to have you on um, because, yeah, we haven't talked to you in a while, but I still see NZ Bro going strong in the community. Um, and we are going to have sort of these these teams on again. Give us a bit of an update since we've had guests on, which has been about a year. I guess, I mean, we can delve straight into the deep, but why don't we Why don't we go the, uh, the easy question first? You've got an Anzac um, competition coming up next week. You've run it for three years. Do you want to give a bit of details about that? Because we've got there's an exciting new edition this year of internationals, so bigger field in there. Correct. Yeah. So each year we've run a Australia versus New Zealand, basically, which is ANZACs, um, is Australia New Zealand Air Corps, which is based on the First World War when the Aussies and New Zealanders landed in Gallipoli. Um, so we commemorate that on the 25th of uh, April each year. So I work with um, VTO with um, Prague and we come up with a a race each year and it's basically just great bragging rights between the Aussies and Kiwis. We're always the underdogs being a smaller country than the Aussies. So it's always um, a great rivalry, which which we've had and which continues today. So um, no matter what sporting event it is, the Kiwis always want to beat the Aussies. And so far, the Aussies haven't beaten us in this race. And um, oh. yeah, hopefully we can hopefully we can keep it that way. Um, we do have celebrity guest riders that come in, so sometimes we get some pro riders and that hitting hitting into the um, into the pens, which is always great. And we'll be hopefully messaging a few of them and see if we can get them to to jump in there just to spice things up. Um, it is all in one pen, so all the Australians go in pen A, all the Kiwis go in pen B, and any internationals go into pen C. Um, all the bikes have been auto allocated, so there's no no differences at all. So it's all down to who can smash it the most. And um, yeah, last year we got over a thousand riders uh, for the series, so we're looking to emulate that as well. So fingers crossed, we can get some some good numbers in there and have some fun racing. Well, so wow, essentially as a mass start. You can kind of is that how it's working? Mass start and like and then it is. Wow. Okay, that'll be interesting. And so people can then battle with each other across all categories, essentially within that mass start and help. So it, it's it's the full country versus full country, essentially, is what you've got going on. As as you, uh, it is. Yeah. Instead of uh, separate it out by category, you just do what you can. Correct. Yep. And the points allocation are cap based though. So even if you get dropped near the start, it's still a race. So no matter where you are on the course, if you see an Australian jersey, you beat that. That's your goal (laughs) is just to beat any Australian jumper that's with you. (laughs) So it's a points race then that's allocating points to the finishers. Cool. Very cool. Um, That's interesting to me that you've been able to win this like each year come on i i'm I'm kind of like yeah so uh, to have it be competitive like get as many australians out there as you possibly can versus new zealand sounds like new zealand now how's the points format working i want to understand it a little bit 
so it's it's 10 points for the first rider from each okay. category and gotcha. just downwards so 10 9 basically back to one so gotcha. really nice and simple yep um yep, yep. and yeah cool. just all cat based so nice and simple yeah yeah sounds good i've been pretty close they got close to us close last year it was probably a couple of points um in it so yeah hopefully we can get some good strong riders and and clean up again which is always the case but you have to um you have to have it across the board so we need the c graders we need the d graders so we need all of those competing to to get those points what's the date again on this i'm not i'm not familiar sorry everybody uh 25th of april so next 20, thursday 20, which okay. will be wednesday europe yeah so next wednesday uh and internationals can jump in and you can find it as a official event out on Zwift, I'm assuming. And uh, so you check out your companion yeah. apps. Is there anywhere else that it's listed? Is, is there some stuff happening on Facebook, website, etc.? cetera? Uh, yeah, it's posted up on the Zwift NZ page as well um, with the links in there to join. Sweet. Awesome. As we'll well as our own NZ page. So tell me, Kev, because I've joined, obviously, um, is there, so there's two races, because I see there's one, and then there's another one, like, almost an hour afterwards, so they're back-to-back -back races. They are, yep. So, yeah, okay. hit the first one, and then a few minutes rest, and then straight into the second one, which is a crit race, and then after that, oh. there's the barbecue and beers chat which is basically just a bragging um give each other a bit of grief <laughs> as you warm down <laughs> oh sounds love like it okay day. this is good that, that sounds like a tough day <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah this is gonna be good later, i like we'll it so the, the first race is the hilly route reverse so 27 or just on 28k just about 28k three laps of that uh canyon aero road 2021 is what the kiwis have been uh allocated so it's a good bike i know they'll be neutralized probably but i do like that it's at least a good looking bike hopefully the aussies have the um the big spin bike or something just to you know make them look a little bit worse make them look slow um and kev also off the back of this you've got um sort of early doors announcements around a New Zealand and Australian or New Zealand series over the winter that you're running as well? Yeah, it's, it's open to anyone that can basically jump in there and race the series. So it doesn't matter where they're from as long as the time sort of suits them and the schedule works well for them. And that'll be starting, I think, 15th of May and every second, every second week, it'll be a, a five race series. Nice, just to cool. spice things up over winter. Yeah, that's what could be, That's always a question. So I'm out of the loop when it comes to the Zwifting in the Southern Hemisphere. And so, like, what's the – from both of you, I'm wondering, like, each year are there mainstays? Like, obviously, Anza, it almost feels like this kind of kicks things off where I am like, oh, yeah, that's happening. And, I mean, three years in running, we've had – we've been – you know, last year we highlighted this and – like is is that kind of how it's seen a little bit in some ways that like around this time is when people start heading indoors or no as are we still a little early for that i'm wondering and and what's the timing for setting up series for the southern hemisphere in a way that makes sense that you'll get participation but that's to kevin i think because he's run a lot of different stuff on on, on zwift yeah, for us, um, we see in TTT numbers the end of the summer series and all of the outdoor events are starting to finish. So over the next four weeks, everyone will start coming indoors. And whether that means they'll zone to it or whether they'll start racing, it just depends on where they are and how their, their summer series went outdoors. And those numbers start increasing. So around that June, July is probably our main area for competitive racing down down here for us. There is obviously those that race all year, and and that's great. And they're and that's pretty similar to most teams. They'll have a core base that will race all year, and then they'll have the ones that come in and out based on seasons and and what they do outdoors. 
Yeah, what I'm trying Keep, to do um, comparison, oh. like between September, like for us, it's like you just start getting that trickle in in September. Yeah, ZRL kicks off then. That's kind of like a way to pull people in for Northern Hemisphere. But, you know, some people, most people, it's their, it's fall, so or it's the beginnings of fall, the end of summer. So September and then October, even through December, it's still in November and December, you start getting the main bulk and then like the big push is January, like you know, and so, and you'll see the most of like peak Zwift numbers for the whole world happen in January, but that's really driven by Northern Hemisphere. What do you think peak Zwift is for your hemisphere? Like the Southern Hemisphere, is it, is it that June? Is that about what it is or is it a little after? Um, definitely after. Um, I think for us, August, September would be okay. where most riders are peaking. Okay. As gotcha. far as fitness indoors. Interesting. Kev, um, just got a few people coming in with questions. They are stoked that there's going to be a, a Southern Hemisphere series. Can you give any detail? So you said every second week, do you have a day and time? These are, I think it's some Aussies coming in who want to uh, jump in. So. Um, I do. I think if they search the events in, um, in Zwift Power, I think it comes up under Kiwi Crew. So if they search the Kiwi okay. Crew, it should come up as a winter series in there. Kiwi Crew winter series. Let's okay, see if I can awesome. Find it um, everybody too. Yeah, that'd be good. I think I'll definitely um, be jumping on those. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I would say um, Southern Hemisphere esport is kind of interesting in that I'd agree with Kev the September time almost peaks because that's when WTRL comes online as well. And it's still sort of a little bit rainy here, I would say, in that springtime. Um, and then you've got that WTRL stuff coming online. Um, <clears throat> although I'd say like over the last few years, the series, yeah, that has been run that June, July, you're probably getting, even just in the New Zealand series, about 300 a week coming on. So it's still pretty good numbers all through that winter. But a lot of Kiwis I know are sticking on esport all through the summer too because that's when all the big race series are on so we've almost become perennial zwifters or esporters just by the nature of most of the fun stuff's over the the summer for us on swift so kevin i also yeah. like was one we had a little bit of conversation prior to going live i'm just wondering if you wanted to touch on like where things are at you know you are a mover in esports spaces specifically for New Zealand in a lot of ways. And, you know, I've seen you comment here and there on Facebook, some other places, and, you know, there's this um, conversation. I think the conversation is just moving forward in, in some sort of ways, but just realities. Uh, we've seen Zwift Games. Uh, we've got World Championships on my whoosh. Um, there's a little bit of trickle down about how things may be happening from a organizational perspective, like, um, what are your thoughts on the way things are going with eSport and like your take from like a New Zealand, you know, perspective and where, where things should happen, how things should move forward or are moving forward or going to move forward, regardless of shoulds or oughts or anything like that. Like what, what do you see happening? Yeah, it's, it's probably an interesting time at the moment with eSports and, and where things are as far as, um, how we see it from down under. To me, New Zealand's like a small part of the global series. So how we deal with the National Federation being Cycling New Zealand is pretty much how I see esports dealing with the UCI. Um, there's a, a big goal, obviously, and focus for esports to be taken more seriously and be dedicated with their own sport. But the people above it aren't actually helping generate the interest and doing what they should be doing, leading or governing um, esports. So to me, you know, the UCI don't set out the rules for us. They don't set out a schedule. There's no information online. It's it's very hard. And if we ran a business like that, people would be saying, well, you know, why are we doing this? Well, it shouldn't be run from the down up. It should be run from up downwards. And we're not getting that leadership and we're not getting that direction. So we've got all these different esports platforms marketing themselves and all going in different directions. Well, that's not good for the future of, of esports if we want to be taken seriously as a sport. But for me, I 
I think we need to promote our own platforms and we all need to be independent. And to me, if we had each platform running their own World Series, it'd be awesome. You could be a multi-world champion. Um, each platform is totally different. Um, we don't make, you know, track riders say sorry. You know, it's not the track here. You're going to have to road, road nationals or road worlds. Um, they all ride their own and that's how it should be. You should market your own platform and be successful in marketing that platform. And that's the only way you're going to be able to, to monetize your own platform and to succeed in, in my opinion. And mm -hmm. the sooner we do that, the better. Um, do we need the UCI? Um, to me, I don't think we do. Um, I think as long as everyone has some set rules and some guidelines that their own platform is really clear about, um, I think each of them can actually succeed in doing it. Hmm. That's an interesting take. Definitely an interesting take from somebody running a uh, series and getting some pretty pretty good numbers over there. Uh, what's the future for NZ Bro besides Anzac? And then you've got that series coming up. Uh, sounds like maybe trying to push for some national championships as well for uh, and for New Zealand. I would really hope to see that. Anna, I see your eyes <laughs> perking up a little bit there. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> please. <laughs> it would be cool to see um, that, you know, kit. It's a fern. I'm sorry, you guys. I am like, I'm totally silver fern. Silver silver fern. fern. At least I knew it was yeah. a fern, right? At least yeah, I that's knew. Pretty good. Yeah, like, yeah, come yeah. on. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> you know, to be honest, compared to like most Americans, Nathan, you do a pretty good job at knowing about a tiny little island nation in the Pacific. So We've, good job. Actually, so Gabriella and I have looked intensely at <laughs> intensely, but I mean, we spent a night like on the map. What's this? Where does Anna live? Where, where can we ride through here? This looks fun. And then next thing you know, we're in like the Easter islands, like looking at those. And, like, <laughs> like, what's oh over God. here? What's going on with that? Like, are there roads? Nathan there? going on a bunny trail. Oh my gosh. No way you guys go on bunny trails. <laughs> Yeah, so, awesome. Well, Kevin, it's uh, absolutely awesome that you're putting on the Anzac uh, Remembrance Race. I want to see if uh, Australia can take you on. Hopefully the numbers are – you said over a 1,000 in the past. I mean, that's pretty awesome. International uh, riders can jump in as well. That's going to be next week, Wednesday. Um, head on over. You said the best place to find information on it as well. Besides, obviously, it's an on-the-calendar event. We'll try and get some links up in the YouTube as well. But next Wednesday, uh, that's going to be happening for the European slash uh, Americans. And I think you said Thursday for everybody else in your hemisphere, your time zone. And uh, also look forward to what you are putting on um, for New Zealand. I think it's the Kiwi Crew. I do see you have the Riot Race up. I'm not seeing it as the yet um, as a series, though on Zwift Power just yet, but that might be a timing thing as it's a little further out. What's the name of the uh, series again real quick? And then uh, we'll let you go. Uh, the Kiwi Crew Winter Series. Kiwi Crew Winter Series. Make sure to check that out, everybody. It'll be cool to uh, see how that goes. So, Kevin, thanks a lot for jumping in with us. And uh, I'm excited to see, uh, hopefully, Silver Fern National Ch Nat Champion rolling around in the near future as well with uh, a lot of your helps in the space. Brilliant. No, thanks for having me on. Of course, Kevin. Cheers, bud. Cheers. Thanks, well, Kev. Yeah, great to have yes. Kevin on. Now, correct me on the name. He said it was fine. He said it was fine. But how, did I did I totally mess it up, Anna? Well, it's not like I wouldn't. I don't look at that and go like, oh, I should know that as a New Zealander. I think that's okay. just as like, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. okay, fine. So I think it's Opelli. Opelli. I was no. I was gonna try that, but look. Okay. Somebody in chat was like Nathan messing up the English language. I do a pretty uh, good job. I no, feel no, like no, 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 no. That, I feel like people's names is not like the English language because there are some names like I know from commentary. Like, oh my gosh, I am calling people over the line. You are an Iron Man, like John Smith. You are an Iron Man, and the name pops up on the screen. And honestly, I'm like hot, like sweat beating down <laughs> as I'm like how do I pronounce that? Like it is hard. That's not the English language. There are some names that have a lot of syllables. <laughs> that is too hard. So how, do, how do you say my last name? I want to know how you say my last name, because for some reason, Northern Europe, 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 Eastern and Northern Europe area. 
Yeah. The the Spanish language that comes from Central America just doesn't like Mexican Spanish just does not transfer over. I don't know why. Like the rolling of R's and like how uh, they use yeah. the U E. I'd there, say it, Nathan Guerra. Yeah, okay. But you've heard me say it a whole okay. lot. And like if you said yeah, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> if you said it correctly by if somebody was coming out of Mexico, it'd be like Guerra. It'd be like gets Guerra, Guerra. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's got the yeah. rrr, rrr. Like in there, like, and it has this, like, there's a reason for it too. Guerra means war. And so it's like, Guerra, you oh. know, but like, that feels so opposite when you have the Europeans go, Guerra, Guerra. I'm like, <laughs> that's, uh, what? Oh, what that you get that <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Which that's I'm cool. That your last cool. Name it's means fine. War. It's fine. Like, whatever. Like, I don't like. It does, you know, it used to not bother me at all, but now I'm, I'm because I think the reason that it does bug me is because it's been put into me as like this tradition now that like, it should bug you if your name, I'm like, whatever, like, because so many people are bothered by it. Because so many people are bothered by if their name's pronounced right or not. And I'm like, whatever, man, they're, it's letters on a page. They're trying, (laughs) you know? See, whereas my name it's just so you can't. Russo. The one way that somebody could do it is <laughs> Russo. Russo. Like- well, actually, like, I'm not going to lie it out. In our wedding, it got mucked up because my maiden name is Ross, and they announced us as Hayden and Anna Ru- Russell. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit through race three of the ZRL playoffs because like the latest post on Facebook, um, oh wait, sorry, just a quick update. <laughs> Kevin has said, and this is why well, I don't know, it's Samoan is his last name. So it's Samoan oh. and I've been, I pronounce it correctly, Opele. Opele. So okay. good to get a bit of context there. Um, there is a lot of comments. So I saw this, it's been posted to me like three times. And so that's where I was like, oh, we'll have to talk about it on the show. <clears throat> is the point system and the structure for the WTL playoffs finals? Because <laughs> there's like a, there's a lot of comments there. But before I go on to those, I think this is really cool. And I love that Martin has commented saying that this is something they're probably going to go forward with a little bit. So there, so to give it up, I'll give the short version. So in race three of these playoffs, but expect this to come next season in the WTRL with regular season stuff, because that's kind of the hint that Martin's given. Two races back to back, five laps of Glasgow crit break, five laps reverse of Glasgow crit, which number one, awesome, great way to do that course. The first time, so race one, or part one, as Martin calls it, it's not FAL and FTS at every banner. It's only at the segments on laps two and laps four. Then the next part, it's only first across the line and only at the Clyde kicker on laps two and four. Now, what I love about this is when I did my very first crit a few weeks ago, in real life crit, they had a preem lap, or however you say it, and you got a pair of sunglasses, <laughs> like a real pair of sunglasses, which was cool. And it was like lap five. Now, I just had no idea what lap we were on because I was holding on for dear life. But you could see the whole race changed in that lap because people were trying to like jet off the front. And like Martin has said in his comments, in a lot of crits, you're not going after points every single lap. There'll just be like these couple of points that a couple of laps that you'll pick these up. And so I think this is personally awesome. And as someone who like spends way too much time on team tactics, like this is a plethora of tactics, especially like race two, where it's only first across like, oh, and sorry, 
And the other thing that throws a huge wrench in the works is the finish line points are not by position, they're by time. So they add up your times from the two races and that is your finish points. So if I don't see like a huge, huge opportunity for breakaways here, like I don't know what other race you would have it. And so I'm pumped because you will just try, you're not going to wait till the end to sprint. You're going to try and get away. Like at least get, you could get one of your riders a minute up the road and that's a huge points haul for you. So I, yeah, I'm pumped. Ah, the motivation to break away comes from the actual finish line points and the finish line points as you just said, are only based off of the combined time from the two races. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. And so. And so you. you so okay. So it's a competition. So let's let's simplify where the crucial points then are. The only they're they're they're, they're very specific. F FTS and FAL on laps two and four. Of the first race. That's yep. the crucial point. FAL and FTS. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's it for that race, right? Yep. Okay. Then. And the finish line time. Yeah. And your finish And then your time is, is set aside. You get that time. Yep. And that's going to be added. Then yep. that'll be the next, that'll be the final thing. But then, so if we go in like a chronological order, if I go into this race and I'm thinking about it, what do I got to think about? What do I got to do? I got to get to the FTS and the FAL on laps two and four through that section as fast as I can and first cross line are going to matter on the first race. Then I also have to be thinking about, we need to get the fastest time for me and my crew across that line. Cause I'm going to bank this time for a GC kind of idea stages here. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. go race FAL First cross line for laps two and four. So then the second race turns into a situation where you might be trying to break away and get first across line in laps two and four and get a better time. So it's like, it's like packing in the FAL idea of fastest time for GC also into that FAL on laps two and four. So it's kind of like a mixture of the motivations as best as you possibly can while keeping some of yep. this points racing involved. This is like the biggest argument for why you need a specialist team now. So like mm. this is getting us closer to that point of like when you're recruit and like when you're recruiting for a top team, you will be like, I need a sprinter and I need a breakaway specialist. Like you don't see teams in real life. You don't see Kenyon Shram coming to a race with six equal riders who are all after the same goal. You have a leader. You have someone who'll break away. You have a sprinter who can do this. So this is how, like, why I'm so excited because I look at this and I'm like, okay, we need at least like three sprint specialists in the pack for part one who can get us those FTS on lap four. But we don't need the whole team there. So mm -hmm. while they're going for FTS, we get three riders drilling off the front, get some FAL at that one, and then go get a big lead to the finish line. So gone are the days of kind of, I hope if Martin kind of like takes this further, and I think he's almost using this as a bit of a test because the ZRL playoffs is a good test because it's really the, only the most hardcore people who are still sticking around in the Northern Hemisphere with the sun shining to do this, is that we'd always been talking kind of at the end of the ZRL season this year, like, Oh, the points racing is kind of getting a little bit boring because what ends up happening is people just sit in the pack, sit in the pack, go for FTS, sit in the pack, sit in the pack, go for FTS. And you're sort of like, okay, whereas this is mixing it up. It's forcing you to like split your team into roles um, and do some more exciting things. So I've got to do a lot of numbers and spreadsheets this weekend to figure out which, how many riders we need to get FTS versus how many we need to go get time because I need to know the finish line point split. Because if the finish line point split is like 20 for first place, 19 for second, 18 for third, but FTS is like way more weighted, then obviously we'll keep more back for FTS. So yeah, it's a lot of like, it's like my mind's going crazy. Yeah, so finish points. There's one set of finish points available. Each rider's combined total time, like you said, forms the final rider finishing order. I think that's kind of cool actually, because it, creates this motivation after or even before those first FT, uh, FAL and FTS points on lap two and four, where you can start kind of pushing 
and like try and get the best time you possibly get. So GC r- kind of riders can just totally go for it still. Um, points are awarded as 40 for first, 35 for second, 30 for third as per regular season scoring and then totaled with FAL and FTS points per team. So you take your points from that finishing time from both the races, okay, which is 40 for first, mm-hmm. 35 second, right? And then you then add that to what you collected throughout the FAL and the FTS throughout the whole thing. And then that gives you a points total for your team and each teammate gets their own points total. And then you have the 20 league points scoring table for whoever is, yeah. and whoever scores 20 points is the winner, obviously, because that's the, yeah. how they, how you win. So, And then it's also because it's your combined time. If you are a rider who has got, a faster time on race oh, it's one. Combined. It's combined. Yeah. Total time. So it's total overall time. So wait, if you've wait, got each rider's combined race. total time, but it's each rider's. You don't they're not combining it with the whole team. No, no, no. But it's okay, each just so what I'm sure, saying. Just here making is like, sure. Just yeah, making yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, gotcha. yeah, yeah. So you're a rider. So say me. Say I decide to break away in race one and I get 20 seconds on the field. I have to be then a rider who breaks away on race two. Because if I sit in the pack and lose time, then we haven't got the benefit of that time gain. So that's why you've got to allocate that right the riders to be like, you are the ones who are after time. So you've got to do that race one and race two. You can't go for it race one and then be so shattered. You just lose time on race two. It's got to be mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. you've got to focus on that for both races. So yeah, I'm like super pumped about it. To I think see how it's going to be. I want to see how this, how this plays out. And <laughs> yeah. I think it's a good mixture of motivations because one thing that definitely I was still, I can show up and race anything like just about anything. I'm so competitive. I just like, like, okay, whatever, like find something. I can make something up in a race and just be like, well, can I, can I suffer and make others suffer in some sort of way on the bike? Go like, and I'll figure yeah, that yeah, yeah, out, yeah. right? I'll figure a way out to make that happen and shoot for something. Um, but this seems to really create some very specific carrots, like you were saying, some very specific goals for individual riders and where, where everybody can play a role uh, in some sort of way. And we've talked about that a lot in, especially in the world of teams uh, in competitive esports, having roles is a big factor in mm-hmm. almost all video games. When you come to teams, you have a support role, you have a like, damage role, usually, or an aggressive role, you have a mainstay tank or hold everybody together commander type role like you have these roles across all video games like that and i I like it that this is trying to accentuate them within a game mode that martin's kind of making up on on, you know yeah this has been a development too you can see it where yeah over time he's introduced these new things last year tried introducing something and then it got scrapped there were there were there was this whole point structure thing that, that was going to get introduced and then it ended up not happening. But I think this is maybe pulling it back a little bit and just doing something a little mm-hmm. bit more simplified that does still get at this role stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's quite a few comments on the complexity, but I think if you just, all you have to think prior to the race is like which team members are focusing on what and to know that it's laps two and four, you have points. So I think just remember that it's actually not too complicated. Is it complex um, or are people like not interested in reading anymore? Probably that. And I yeah, think I like, think like people just want to be like, <laughs> people. Want, I, I think there's this reality of like Zwifting in some respect. I got to say this is, is there an event? I want to do it. Click. How do I do discord? And now people are okay with discord, you know, and it's like, Oh, of yeah. course, Discord. But Discord was like, comp- and there was all these comments about how complex Discord is. And now it's chilled out because it's accepted. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, I think there's yeah. this like, oh, I can't be bothered. It's like, well, tr- let's see. Let's try it out. I mean, think about how we used do you- to do the team time trial. Like, 
None oh of this God. would even exist. Oh my you know, God. And, and the team time trial had thousands of people involved. And you had to yeah. sit there and there was no event and talk about <laughs> and what time is our time? Make sure you know what our time is. Like yeah. come on, this is complex yeah. to know that it's laps two and four, like really, and that it's your time combined. Like that's not that like you just don't want to read. Come I would on. Say, <laughs> so I'd say for playoffs, this should be totally fine. Anyone doing playoffs is an avid Zwift, Zwifter. They'll know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. I would say if they're bringing this into regular season, there'll be new people, right? Who will just be like, what the, is, I don't even know what I'm doing and what is this? One thing I think could improve it is actually not on like the event organization side, but it's actually on the Zwift software side. Because in IndieVelo, which um, I really, really liked was you could allocate banners to be points, right? So like, in this case, like lap two is going to be for points. And there was a uh, distance countdown. So on the like top right of the screen or something, it would say like 300 meters to whatever. Like I've the raced the points. bots. I've raced the bots in this format. Yeah. On Velo, and it was a lot of fun. I actually told Zwift how fun it was. I was like, you guys, this yeah. is really, really fun, actually. But having that countdown would really help because if it's it someone would. new, you say, just keep just keep an eye on your countdown and that'll tell you where the next points and are. And you get really good at it when you see that. You can start repeating this timing thing to yeah. know the timing on that course in a different way because of that countdown. Oh, I've got about yeah, 400 and it'll help. meters. I got to worry now a little bit or 500. Oh, I went too early this time. Yeah. And that, that number, that metric is so crucial. Yeah, and then it doesn't matter if it's banner X or banner Y or banner A that we're going for because you'll have it up on screen to know. You don't have to do a full course recon if you're new. You don't need to know what Titans Grove is. You just need to know, like, look at that part of my screen. It'll tell me where it is. <laughs> well, I mean, there's you a better lot know of, what like, You better know what Titans Grove is if you want $2,000. Like, come on. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Not in this one. <laughs> we're talking about Zwift games. That no, was a Zwift no. games thing. Anna. Yeah, but if you almost. go, <laughs> I know, almost, right? If you go like, because the reason I'm kind of thinking of this is we've got, I've been shepherding new Zwifters and by new, I mean like brand new, like how do we use Discord into these TTTs we're doing? So like, what is Zwift? What is a TTT? And it's really interesting to learn what things could be improved from a user standpoint who has never used it that we just kind of grin and bear it. And that would be one of them, like a bit of a distance just countdown, like some it. simplicity so there. It's so true. <laughs> we just <laughs> grin and bear. It's so true. It's, it's really, really true in some ways. Uh, thank you, Niall coming in over at chat, reminding us of last year, year was segment battle points. I remember. And I was really excited about segment That's battle points. Right. Actually, You remember that? Yeah. Remember segment battle points? Yes. Yeah, I do. Yep. I don't actually um, remember how I can't it worked, remember. though. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember it got scratched. Um, yeah, that there was but a big I like deal this. about it, too. I wonder if the posts are still out there. You can find segment battle points. I'm going to see real quick. Oh, my gosh. That'll there. be um, triggering. That'll be really triggering. But I think um, I'd have to say it's a great format. I hope Martin does introduce it. It's that mix of scratch racing and points. And I think we're just going to see more breakaways um, so if and we more have team. A comparison. Go ahead. Sorry. And I'm totally on total somewhere else. It is going to be a great format. Yep. There we go. That was my end statement. Great format. Stick with it. Three last year on Dece no December thirtieth, two thousand twenty-two. At the end, like one day to go in twenty twenty-two, but in like beginning of two thousand twenty-three, announcing segment battle points. I think this is where this idea kind of started. It has. You want to talk about a big difference in like what's going on? In Rage like ah. 308 comments, 140 <laughs> reactions, and 14 shares. Whereas this recent one <laughs> from the Zero Finals is 80. Well, it's 81 comments, I think, on this one, and seven mm. shares. You know, 80. So a little less crazy. But I guess maybe that's a time of year thing, too. That might be a time of year. Because yeah, I, I mean, December. Time of year. God, if know, this December was announced. Thing. In the December. middle of December, oh, we might, it might, things might be crazy. Oh, man. So. But I think that's awesome. Um, okay. 
other things awesome update 1.63 is it awesome um the only thing i enjoy about it because i'm a big route badge hunter is that the eight event routes that were used in Tour de Zwift 2024 and Zwift games are now rideable or runnable. So Big Flat 8, Castle Crit, Castle Crit Run, it's a running one if you want to do it, Jurassic Coast, Loop de Loop, Mountain Mash, Spiral into the Volcano and the Zwift games epic. Oh, I've so already unlocked a lot those of those. I, you can go get a badge now for each of those. Yeah, if you haven't, I haven't done, done the event, if you haven't done the events, I haven't done Castle Crit, Big Flat Eight, or Mountain Mash, so I'll go do those. And Castle the other Crit part is one of the best race courses in existence. Oh, okay. Uh, it is. It is amazing. I'm not kidding. Like it, yeah. you can hang on, barely probably, but if you really are tactically astute. If you think about that course, you go up to the castle in McCurry, okay? And you know how yeah. it's like this, you hit the cobbles and then it flattens and you go around and then Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the through the banner and then it, the little jaunt that's kind of up and then the sharp turnaround back through the castle down the hill. Ooh. And then the hill rolls right back in. Like literally you go down the hill oh. and the hill flattens for just a second at the flat point and then goes right back up that kind of cobbled climb into the castle. So essentially you have nice. like, we have um, a couple different courses here that are crit courses uh, in Wisconsin that are very similar. And usually those are the big preem days that we put on because it's so hard to get across that line first place right, because of okay. the because of the timing with the roll through with the speed and then you can accelerate and and then it's also a little bit of a climb though and it's just long enough that you can't just punch it and it's it's a good one it's a really really i raced that uh a couple of times in a row actually what was the event that was going on there was some event that was going on i think it it may have been the Z racing or there was something where I just raced it like three or four times that week because I thought it was so fun and like just wanted oh, to get God, really, of course really. You did. Oh, and no, Rhino racing put a race on, on it too, where you could do it ah, as okay. a chase race. They did it as a chase race. So then it was like trying to roller coaster it with your chase group. <laughs> that was a ton of fun. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a Nathan thing. Like I loved it. So I did it a hundred times in a day. <laughs> um, the other um, part of the update that has made me really happy is the brake sensitivity adjustment. So I was having an issue. I don't know if anyone else was, and <clears throat> it really bit me once because it happened at the start of a race when the banner dropped is I have plays. And for some reason, the brakes, like I'd be doing a workout where it, I wouldn't notice, but I'd see my brake light was on and my play was vibrating. I was like, this is weird. And then I'd go into the pens and it would disengage, apparently disengage the plays because it was a race or disengage braking. Like, but then the banner would drop and my avatar would be braked, like just stopped. And it happened a couple of times at the start of a race, which was like a real nightmare. Um, and it made me so nervous that I just stopped using them. But now you can go into your preferences and just put braking sensitivity to zero. Because, and like uh, Eric from Zwift Insider has said, most people are just going to put it to off because they're annoyed at this kind of stuff happening or accidentally bumping your brakes. Um, so yeah, until Zwift puts in braking, yeah, just turn it off because... I've found yeah, this really one of them was like what's the reason for breaking right now? Yeah. I said like one of my best all time one minute powers because that happened and then I spent a minute trying to get back onto the the, the race that had already left. Yeah, so yeah, turn it off. Okay. Andrew Banky is coming in and says that he or someone may use it to get back into the draft quickly. But right now, before this sensitivity, breaking was so strong. That I feel like it would just be like, Whoa! like all you were just stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's because it was yeah. like pushing A to go to your parent screen, kind of a stop. It was just boom, like no yeah. more. So it's I not think, feathering. No, so I think if you bring the sensitivity way down, if you are using it for that, or for me, I like to use my power um, and my 
feathering of the yeah. petals to go backwards. But some people, you know, depending on their group and if they get really good with the breaking sensitivity, I could see that that being a thing. But I this was one of the first things I said when I was testing the plays. I was like, first of all, the placement of those breaks freaks me out horribly. <laughs> like if I'm yeah. steering at all, all I'm thinking about is I'm going to hit my brakes because all I got to yeah. do is go like this just a little bit on the wrong timing. And I've done it plenty of times where I'm trying to steer yeah. and bam, I'm hitting my, I'm like, this is the opposite of what I want completely. And so having them off then I don't even have to care. Cause it goes, it's the other, it's the reverse way. It's the reverse so of steering. Pedal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually it, when it I first started to- using them, I started like trying to steer on just one side, it was just breaking all the time because I was just trying to go left and right on the same paddle. Almost they need to, what do we use this one for now? This little button on the side. Oh, that's gear shifting. It almost needs to be like a, um, one of these buttons. Like it just needs to be kind of like a tap button. Um, and just on one paddle. So you're really intentional with it. You're just Mm kind of like, you know, like little push is a feather of the brake. Push, push, hold is like hard brake to stop. But when Neil would you Blackbird, even need to do that? Neil okay. Blackbird just came in and said on chat, brake to stop you going through a fence as well. It's a good call. It's a good call. If you're, if you're, I, I could see a, a frustration where in game where you're finding yourself near the fence and you don't want to go past the fence, but you accidentally keep going past the fence in a, yeah. a group ride and then you're getting warned to get kicked out and you've got all the, you know, you're, you're bad, you know, and you're not, I don't yeah. want to go, I'm not trying <laughs> yeah, to do yeah. this, you know, and we'll just chill out. Well, what if I don't want to chill out a little bit? And so, you know, I have those rides where I need to get a workout in and a little bit and you could still hang out with your buddies and throw the brakes on a little bit here and there, you know, so you're not going past you could the do a, You could do a real sink or sprint option with TTTs. Imagine that you've had your turn on the front, touch the brakes for a sec, boom, you're back to like ride a five and then just amp it up. Because what I've noticed with the TTTs, with the bikes being so much faster, is you feather down, but everyone's moving so quickly that you kind of almost want to go like brake, go, instead of like feather down. And then you're like, oh my God, they're riding 45k an hour and pop and yeah. So, um, and then there's also the this bike. kind of, if you can, if you can feather it just enough with the power that you don't interrupt the line too, there's that whole thing. Yeah. So I could see the brakes yeah. in the TTT. It's dangerous. Oh man, that's a tough one, <laughs> but I haven't practiced it before. It probably could get, if you get good at with it. Um, I've always just feathered, feathered the pedals. Uh, McCarthy's Charles McCarthy. Good to see you in chat as well. Also saying that they fixed, the avatar steering mm. back into the center of the road after four seconds issue. Previously, you had to hold the steering direction down to stay on the correct, correct side of the road, the road side of the road that you wanted to be on. So uh, interesting. So now you have more full control. So I think that that was a feature rather than a bug. I think that they kind of mm. were trying to make you steer if you want. Maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong about that. But I think there was like this you know, make you go toward the center, the assumption that you want to be toward the center and that if if you want to be on the sides, you're steering toward them. But I could definitely, um, or perhaps it wasn't, but uh, either way, it sounds that you now have more freedom in your steering. Yeah, and I can see um, in the comments on Swift Insider's article on this, the first one that came up is virtual shifting update for kickers four and five that's all i want to know which is all i wanted to know either but now i don't care because i sold my v4 five and bought a v6 <laughs> because you just i was in. so you just were like all right, let's i just go. gave in <clears throat> i gave in because it looks as though the v6 is the first to get all the updates and i was like i and to be honest i need virtual shifting with my shoulder for when i get on the bike because i'm in a sling for six weeks I can't reach down and change my mechanical gearing on my bike. And I've actually bought a, a click because now you can just buy the click solo, getting it sent to Jen in Texas. She's sending it to me and then I can use it. So sorry, all you V5 owners, like hopefully that'll come because they said soon. And it's been like, like that's not like, it's not good enough. Like it's actually not good enough. The V5 has the same tech as a V6. And I'm annoyed that I've had to spend more money 
and it's very frustrating and there's a lot of comments on it so yeah if you're gonna like have a good old partnership make sure that this stuff actually happens for people who have this gear is my only thing so next up you wanted to talk about caitlin clark which is interesting to me what's going on with this <laughs> like like we're talking basketball WNBA. like what what what's caitlin clark got to do with our esports <laughs> Oh my gosh, everyone on my team, right? I don't know. I've become like pretty obsessed with her. So, uh, and maybe there, let there people is know a tie. who Caitlin Clark is too. Yeah, I will. If you don't know, there is a tie in. There'll be a tie in to esport at the end of this, but appreciate the bunny trail for a little bit. Is my son, my oldest son, suddenly took a liking into basketball. And I was like, okay, let's watch some basketball. I saw there was a New York Times podcast on like, basketball player Caitlin Clark. I was like, okay, cool. I'll, I haven't watched basketball since the late eighties and probably Michael Jordan was still playing. It was a Chicago Bulls and I was obsessed. I'm a bit of a follow the star. Like I love the big stars. Like I just get really into it. Um, so anyway, I listened to this podcast. I was like, oh, she sounds cool. She plays college basketball. So then I got my son and I, we watched March Madness, which I've never heard of before. And we went on and watched all of the University of Iowa games that she was in. And I was like, the, like, this is a bona fide superstar. Like, and it, so she did those. And then I watched the WNBA draft live. Like we made some popcorn and me and my kids watched it. And I've never watched an American draft in my life because I, I'm not a huge fan of most American sports because I just, you know, I'm more international sports, I guess. But I watched it it was like this is amazing like this is so great now i'm like following indiana fever which is the team she went to i'm like trying to buy the hoodies and the stuff so that i can watch the games i've got the game on the calendar but it made me think like what has tight what has got me in so quick like suddenly i'm you know sitting here in new zealand and my son and i are watching wnba games like this is crazy. Like, what is this magic source? And it made me think like, what is the magic source we're kind of missing that would pull someone into like e-sport watching, right? E-cycling. And it kind of made me think like, there's a few things about it for me. One is you, you actually have to be the best player in the world because otherwise eyes don't come on you. So you watch her and you're like, this is unbelievable. You know, it's like Peter Sagan, there was, he was an unbelievable rider, right? And I'd say he transcended cycling, like people liked him beyond cycling. So first off, you've just got to be like head and shoulders above everyone. So that gets eyes on you. The second is you need to be really good in front of a camera. Like when you're interviewed, if you come across well, people are hanging on your words and want to hear what you've got to say. Um, and then the other one is just a bit of like, this is going to make me sound so old, but a bit of like spunk, you know, like you had Peter Sagan doing wheelies over the finish line and you've got Caitlin Clark doing like the Michael Senna, you can't see me stuff when she gets shots in. Right. And it just like, you just get that real, um, you just get really into it. So like I put it down to immense talent, good marketability and spunk like something that just sets you apart. And I just, if do you think if we had an eSport rider that kind of bought a bit of that, that it, you could have a superstar in eSport that you would get eyes onto? Yeah, I think, I think within this niche, you could do that. There would have to be some sort of catalyst though, I think, outside mm. of, you'd have to have a couple of catalysts probably to go more mass, you know, like, wow, this is amazing. What's going on here? Because we are so niche. When you say, if I say basketball, everyone knows what I'm talking about. If I say virtual cycling, mm -hmm. there's not very many people who know what I'm talking about. So you would have to have some sort of catalyst to even give a framework for what pe what the heck you're talking about, you know? So there's that, there's definitely that. Yeah. Um, I agree with everything that you had to say there. I think, I mean, I, our podcast can get so general because I have in, intense interest in talking about the whys of everything that you just brought up, like a hundred percent want to like dive into like, why is college basketball so popular and why isn't it, why isn't WNBA doing as well as the college and why is like, like, it's like, there's all of these different 
levels of sport that have different followings for, I think, slightly different reasons, actually. It isn't just like what I think we like simple answers as humans, um, like because science, like that's like we end up being able to give explanations for things. But like at the same time, it might be a little bit more complicated than just a simple here's what, you know, like kind of a thing. And mm. so, um, yeah, that's a little bit of a bunny trail that's more not on the superstar topic. I do think that if we had a little bit of a catalyst and just having that interest that the hero story to follow is, I mean, it's why you like Frodo and Samwise, you know, it's like against the odds individual. It's why you like Luke Skywalker. It's like why you like Ray. It's why you like these heroes mm -hmm. is because they stand out among the rest to fight some opposition that you're going to, you know, that, that they're going to go against and be something special in the world like that's a narrative. It's a story that we all want to follow and live out. It we aspire toward it, and so sport is, in a lot of ways, a part of our. And this is, this comes from my my you know background in religious studies. It is religion at the end of the day, and I know this is gonna freak people out, but it's like <laughs> take away truth concepts, take take away origin stories, take all that away. Sport is team or individual hero stories being played out in front of us that we aspire to, to be like, here's our why, here's a why, here's a, mm -hmm. here's a thing. That's an aim. That's a good that we're going to go toward and collectively, ah, like get it and accomplish. Like that's, it, it's a, it's a hundred percent a religious tradition thing. And it's, there isn't a coincidence that we all gather around a place and go rah, like once a week around this thing. Like that's not a coincidence. And it's very similar yeah, to something no. that people did around a campfire. And then in a more organized way, after the story stopped being told just through passed down of people's telling them, but then got written down and then got really organized. You know what I mean? Like, so it's mm. totally like that same kind of a structure. So Anyways, so Niall's coming. Sorry, with a I good just question. went into a whole long. No, I like thing. that. But the Caitlin Clark thing you said there is that's a part. That's why is like there's some like idolization that goes there. You know what I mean? In a yeah. good way. There's a good way to idolization, and there's also like a well that goes a little bit like yeah. whatever. So yeah, I'm a big idolizer. Like <laughs> I'm a yeah. In case you haven't noticed, I I idolize, and then it's bad because if they ever fall from grace, it's like. I feel completely heartbroken. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> so Niall's well, coming exist, with a good question. Those exist questions. all across all religious history as well, too. The fall from grace ones. Like, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, who is the Zwift hero? Well, we've That's seen Niall's it plenty question. of times. This year, it, Brian Duffy Jr. had a, a major Brian Duffy Jr. All you had to say was the words around the esports space was Brian Duffy Jr. Or you'd say farm watts, mm -hmm. or you'd say KK, or you'd say, you know, GG, or you'd say, you know what I mean? Like fur, like all you have to do is say the mm -hmm. word, say the name. And like, you have a persona around that name that mm -hmm. people start to place a branding and a, there's a, there's an image of that, right? It's like, oh, that person represents this in this space just by saying that name. And so like, we already start to have V Austin, like the duck, you know what I mean? Like, like mm, that, that yeah. was a thing, right? So you start creating those. And the only reason why is because of performances, because of like sacrifices toward the sport that they have made to gain and to, 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 to win in those spaces creates that hero thing that happens with them. So there's plenty, there, there's a whole lot of them. Yeah. It's kind of like, like for me, <clears throat> KK would probably be KK and so Kristen Kochinski and Lionel Vuyasan would probably be the two I would say for me because I don't watch a lot of the men's racing to know much about Brian Duffy Jr. or um, Farm Watts or like I've heard their names but I'd say like if I was watching a race who am I like bought in to win I kind of look at those two I'm like oh they're the big personalities and when I looked at like the ride-ons you know how they had that in the Zwift games like Kristen Kulczynski had like over a thousand right mm -hmm. like it you know, massive. Um, I don't know who out of the men got that ride on Jersey, but that would be interesting. Um, Ed Laverick, but how I does that? Got it? I think Ed Laverick okay. got it. Yep. So it's just like, how does that's that? That's different. Though, Ed Laverick has a community 
that he's developed, which is different as far as like, I think why Ed yeah. got the right on Jersey is because he has a large community that he can pull from who also kind of follow mm-hmm. for a little bit different of a leadership role kind of a way that he's developed a community. Whereas like Kristen and Vyasin had more of that ideal thing going on. Like there's a, there's this ideal that we're following, you know? Yeah. So it's just kind of like, how do you get in a sport that person to then transcend beyond just that sport? But it's, it would be so hard to do. Like even in real life cycling struggles to do that. Like Mm -hmm. you had, and you've, and that's where that spunk part comes in. That's where there's got to be that slight different, you know, like Sagan pulling wheelies over a finish line, you know, and being a bit of a crazy character, put him into that bigger there's relatability across all generations and all you know niches all um cliques you know like all culture like you have to be able to be relatable across all of that and there's certain human traits i think that play toward that that and, and and to be honest cyclists are um we're very head down, like focused, like cycling's hard. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's really like, and it's so intensely, um, if there is a positive side to narcissism, <laughs> like they're like, it's, it's very <laughs> yeah. self focused. If there is, there is a positive, there is a positive that can be taken to achieve something, but there is so much that we can even get awkward. Like I remember, um cyclocross tried doing like this gangnam style dance thing when gangnam style was taking off right on social media and they tried having them do the dances at the cyclocross tra- oh, and they no. just looked silly yeah. it just looked like cyclists yeah. can't dance what the heck because they're skinny <laughs> like sat in one like hard form all day long you know and so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah the relatability whereas you know a, co- a, a young college basketball player you know, who's still very in depth into the culture might have the right mannerisms and the right, uh, and the right language and the right mm. person boom, to just hit things right, to be marketable to a very broad general public. Yeah. But there's, might yeah, be there's magic far, there. We right? might be a little too, but I think that's why KK comes across is I think KK is pretty hip. You know what I mean? Like just in that little, like <laughs> yeah. at one glance, you know what I mean? I think she yeah, is relatable yeah. to the culture. Yeah. Yeah, like you could look at esport being a little bit niche and a little bit on edge, and yeah, that's probably true. And like Lionel is a little bit strange, <laughs> like with the duck and stuff, right? It's There's like that too. That's... There is that. There yeah. is the just kind of like strange factors. Like what? Okay, cool. Like let's go. And yeah. I mean, also modern internet, they'll jump on. I mean. There are anomalies too. Like meme culture is a thing because of anomalies. So there's there's that. Yeah. Well, that's um, a cool little. I like the Caitlin Cart thing. I like that. I like the um the look at well, how do we develop a Caitlin Clark? How do we develop the the MJs, the the heroes of the sport? I hope. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to the next next season of Zwift. I'm excited to see what we could do about that. All right, so Zwift Click Virtual Shifter now available as standalone purchase. You just bought this. Is that right? I just bought it. Yeah, it's great. Well, I don't have it yet. I assume it's great. It's great. Um, it's great. I, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Oh, my God. Um, I'm just looking forward to it with the fact that I can have one arm in a sling and one arm just being able to click through the gears. Because I have been using a smart bike. I'm on the Wahoo Shift at the moment, just trying it out. Decided not to buy it. Um, but I have really enjoyed the virtual shifting. But the other, like, and it's just like kind of the little things, right, is that with this, I can't see what virtual gear I'm on at any time. Um, it's not on the screen. It's I think you can use a Wahoo Bolt computer, which I don't have. Um, so it would just be nice having the shift and being able to look on screen and being like, cool, I'm on that gear. Like it's, um, yeah, I'm quite excited. It'd be good. And it's not too expensive. No, wait a second. The I'm hearing that the Climb Portal XP farming got nerfed. Oh, what? I'm not a I'm not a big climb portler. 
April 16, 2024, Eric Schlange wrote a post and he said that in August, Zwift changed the power mix, power up mix in August, cutting in half the number of large bonuses that you could get. Because we remember we did the whole XP farming thing where you could get large uh, yeah. bonuses well, going you up. You did. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, did. Had, we did a feature on it. Yeah. Don't add me in there. It's not we. <laughs> you went and went bonkers on climb portals. I just sat here from the side being like, you're climb crazy. Climb scaling was added in December, allowing you to ride a less steep version of a climb while still hitting the same number of power-up arches. You can no longer flip a U-turn and ride back up through an arch in the middle of your descent in order to grab an extra power-up. Uh, more climbs were added and the climb portal schedule had been modified. Okay. But so essentially it's an article uh, that Zwift Insider did, but highlighting that there was a, that Zwift paid a little bit of attention to this and nerfed it a little bit. Um, the climb portal working very differently from when it was first launched, decided to have a refresh on the XP farming topic. So essentially like if you want to go farm XP, it's a little bit different now. You only get the large bonus 10% of the time, you get the small bonus 65% of the time, and you get the feather 25% of the time through the arches on the way up. So you can still do a good amount of farming per hour and 60 minutes, 1,890 XP at the speeds that he tested, um, which is still pretty, pretty dang good. Like, I think I was able to push that over... A little bit higher than that by putting in a solid effort though on the crit course if you wanted to farm the crit course banners um cool. yeah so anyways just as an update if anybody's trying to ex i don't think anybody's xp farming nowadays but it was uh, a little refresh over on zwift insider all right this is kind of fun real like this is this is an interesting <laughs> one digital cyclist is what this is called Flammable Subculture 662, which is probably an AI-generated name. April 6, 2024 at 3.28 a.m. my time. I think WT uh, in my chat. WT is the guy's name in my chat on um, Twitch. Made this song. And this is kind of interesting to me. Uh, let me see if I can get this to play through here. As, like... It's definitely actually really well done. It's actually about a streamer. And I'm, for some reason, I'm not getting any audio coming through here. Let me see if I can get this audio to play. Um, because this was honestly really, really good. I'm going to see if I can bring this on in. But um, it, this actually surprises me. This is one of those things like Anna where the community does something that just kind of comes out of left field. Like it's a song just about <laughs> Zwifting, like literally just about Zwift. It's actually done fairly well. Can I read some of the lyrics while you see if you can get the sound going? Yeah, so I, yeah, this yeah. is the first. I am Poi Pon. I am electric man. I thrive on the power that's in my hands. I ride Swift every single day. Nathan, is this you? Did you ride this? No, no. I ride Swift no. every single day on my virtual bike. I never sway. Round and round, I roll with grace. In this digital world, I find my place. Pedaling fast, chasing dreams through neon lights and pixel streams. Here's a digital cyclist riding through the night with the stars as his guide. He's taking flight. He's a neon sensation spinning through the code in the virtual realm. He's never alone. I may love Zwift, but I have another love, a game called Overwatch. I can't get enough. But when I'm on Zwift, I'm an A grader. My skills are unmatched. I'm a true crusader. Round and round, I roll with grace. In this digital world, I find my place. No mountains for me. I prefer the flats. I'm a time trialist. That's where I'm at. No, no, that's what I say. When the road gets tough, I won't give away. I am ninja. I am from Japan. And my determination is part of my plan. I am Poipon, I am a winner in this virtual world, I am a sinner, but I'll keep riding with all my might because in the end, I'll come out on top, that's right. <laughs> and then it ends, Poipon, number 10 in the game, riding through darkness without any shame, with Pikachu by my side, we'll conquer it all in this digital world where we stand tall. Wow, should be the national anthem of Zwift. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> oh my Oh, it's actually so good. It's actually <laughs> yeah. like, really good. Uh, somebody was messing with my headphones, I think. So that's why we didn't have 
in the audio. So I think I actually have it here now. Give me one sec, everybody. But now, the, now the style of it though is totally something that I think you could like listen to and like enjoy while riding. Like I feel like, like I don't know. It's um. Like it's like chill EDM, like EDM chill, like kicks in. Like I don't know, this is not that bad. Keep it on for the chorus. I don't mind. Move over Taylor Swift. Like <laughs> it's just the chorus now. It's just good, right? Like I could get a little motivated by by that. Let's like go. feel like talk about like cause that's got that hero thing. Like I'm going for it, you know? Like I love that someone has done this. God, the community is good, right? Like they just made a song. Oh my god. That's so good. That's that pretty cool. Really I'm gonna good. go ahead and drop this in chat right now, actually. Uh if anybody's interested. <laughs> it's over on Suno.com. Uh and uh digital cyclist full. Uh, big shout out to WT over in uh, Twitch chat. And uh, I don't know if he's going to do more of these, but uh, I mean, this is that WT that did that. He yeah. comes into my Twitch chat. Yeah, of course he does. Oh. Of course he does. He's oh in my everybody's gosh. Oh, drip that's Twitch chat. Awesome. Oh, cool. I like him. Okay. That's, oh, wicked. Cool. Great job, WT. Yeah, really cool job. Uh, nicely done. All right. Now, all the things that are happening that we get to judge, well, that's going to be this. 2024 spring training kit. Now, we thought that the workouts were okay. Like, we thought they were good. They just weren't necessarily going to produce the endurance that they had talked about. But we thought they were good otherwise. At least I thought they were good. I don't know. Yeah. Anna's kind of rolling her eyes, it looks like, a little bit. But... <laughs> They're okay. I'm not doing kit, them. Though? I think the kid's cool. The kit is cool. I randomly was riding and then a whole bunch of these people rode past me. So it must have been like a, the group workout. Um, so it's, I guess it's proving popular, but the kit was cool. Like, yeah, this green with the words squiggly things all over it and the kind of off black shorts, like a deep gray and the cool little hat and then the glasses. I really like what they're doing with glasses lately by having all the different um, frame colors. So yeah, I think this this kit for me gets like a seven and a half. I really, it looks really good in game as well. Yeah, I'll give this, I'll give this, ooh, between 7.5 and eight. Yeah, right around that area. It's a good one. It's a really good one. Um, it really stands out. It's it's got its own flavor, and though that's kind of kits you need nowadays is to stand out. There's so many kits. There's so many different just colors all over the place, and you see this one, you're like, oh, what's that? Where did that come from? So uh, I like it that it's spring. It's got the green feel. Uh, really, really nice. I'm actually seeing over in Twitch chat. Wt is here. He says he's gonna make a new song. Uh, for Gabby now, you probably see. We're gonna get, we're gonna get, we're gonna get our hero albums. That's what's gonna happen. Here we'll we have go. A KK one. We'll have a Gabby one. We'll have. We got one for Pon Pon. Like, come on, WT. Let's just get like a full album for all of the superstars of Zwift, and then we can release that, and we'll use it maybe for some of our. Uh, well, maybe we'll use it for some of our ZCL broadcasts as well, and really get it out there. I, I, like, because seriously, <laughs> it's really well done. That's cool. Really well done. <laughs> Oh, I do. Yeah, I am very, very impressed with the imagination on that one. If he could get like a AI generated videos that go with it, like music videos, that would be cool too. That would be awesome, actually. Like that would be really yeah. with little scenes of the person that it's about, like actually like with their real life actions happening too, like kicked in. Yeah. We got full on Swift music videos coming on here. WT, I hope he... Come on, let's get them up in the millions. Like they, now, that right there is your catalyst. Right there, that would be a catalyst. <laughs> yeah. Where for some reason it got super popular on YouTube or on Spotify, and it's like suddenly hits like a top songs chart just because it's a cool sounding EDM or something. Yeah. And then yeah. the video is like, what's that video? Who's that person? And bam, there's like suddenly WT. Here we go. Yeah, that's the catalyst for our Caitlin Clark <laughs> of eSports, for sure. Oh, my God. What are you up to <sighs> for the next week, Anna? 
Oh, it's my last week before uh, surgery, so I'm going to get outside on the bike tomorrow and hit up my weights all week to get my shoulder, like, super, super strong. And then, yeah, WTRL playoffs, uh, ZRL playoffs, uh, which is going to be fun, bit of work to do on that. And some workouts, yeah, just like a ton of training. I'm trying to get uber fit so that when I lose a lot of fitness, it's at least from a higher base. I am live streaming lots of zone two, hanging out with the bots, playing some Hearthstone uh, while doing it. While I get like, I I was surprised that I hung out with the A Pacer bot in zone two pretty much while I was able to play Hearthstone at the same time yesterday because I kind of got bored a little bit. But I was like surprised, like wow, okay, my fitness is getting coming. I lost since that back injury. I went from 120 to 130 fitness. I was the, uh, the fittest I'd ever been in my life. I've said this to 60, Anna, mm. 60, like what? 70. Mm. Like, and you know how hard it is to get just one fitness point. Like it's so difficult to get one. Oh, so it's uphill a little bit uphill, but I mean the outdoor rides, I did notice that I'm able to, have you ever noticed this, that you're able to just produce more training stress outdoors? I don't know. Yeah. For me, for me, I produce, but I think it wasn't always like that. I think Zwift made it like that, actually, which is weird. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. My consistency and pedaling yeah, got better that. after Zwift. Yeah, I get that. I probably get so stressed out with the downhills that my stress score goes up because my heart rate goes really high when it should be relaxing. <laughs> Wait, how, are there some crazy hills in New Zealand? Like, is it really? No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> really like, well, actually tell like, okay. I, I know I'm really shit at downhills, but the downhills here on gravel is it's got so much, um, what would you call it? Like ribbing in the road. So it's like, um, because there's so much rain, it like ribs the gravel. So you go over, it's like going over judder bars, like all these judder bars. So you are on a corner and then suddenly you're like duh, 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 as well. And just the two together, I just hate it. Like it makes me feel so unsteady. And I know with gravel, you've just got to like flow and be okay with like skidding out. But yeah, I just, oh, I find it super stressful. Yeah. Um, that is off camber loose is very difficult descending. Like I give you credit there, Anna, honestly, like that is the hardest descending you will get into is, is any kind of loose off camber is you essentially have to learn how to float your bike in a way in which you keep your balance while the wheels are floating over and don't have traction and then be confident that you're going to kick back in when you need to. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the riskiest maneuvers you could do if you're going to try and do it at speed. Otherwise you kind of just have to uh, like, okay, I, I get that. And like I think you, it's slow. Yeah, going. Those are slow going turns. So I've actually found once my shoulders reconstructed and I can get back on the bike and <clears throat> outside in about six months is I think I'm going to head up and down this hill where you go up and then you just go down the gravel and just do it as hill work and just repeat it and repeat it until I like train my brain to get over the like fear that you're going to fall. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. Well, I think we'll probably be getting outside a little bit too. More of those, uh, Husband on the front, 500 watt rides while zone two <laughs> hanging on. And, uh, and then maybe a little bit of kiss 100. I mean, I think I'm doing like one hard effort a week and then just zone two, zone two, zone two, just build up that fitness back up without getting tired. So that's what I'm up to. Well, everybody, this has been episode number 91. If you do want to download this, remember it is a podcast. Head over to ZwiftMeLive.com slash podcast. You can find them there as well as searching Zwift and the rap anywhere that you do download your podcast. We'll see you next week. Anna, do we have, we're going to be regular time on Wednesday next week. Anna, I think no guest. Uh, yeah, regular time. And then the week following, I, I might write you a little schedule on the our doc actually. So put times and guests. Cause I was a little oh, bit we're gonna get organized. Wow. Oh, we're going to get organized. <laughs> we're going to do it. <laughs> I hear yes. we're chatting with, as we're doing with granny. I hear we're chatting with, Please like, do. I mean, 
Rasisu, I hear that we yep, may be chatting soon. with Don't Get Drop Cycling, Eric Lee. So lots of guests coming up, everybody. So this time Sean? we'll be getting used. Sean from Zwift. Sean exciting Perry stuff from happens. Zwift. Yep. Some big announcements there. Really big announcements coming there that I am extremely excited about. But we got a big zip until we can actually go there. But uh, yeah, everybody, this new time when we do have guests. Otherwise, we've got the other time when it's just me and Anna. What do you say? Waffling? You say waffling down there. Oh, I said rabbiting on. Rabbiting on. But don't you use that waffling away? Like, oh, waffling, that... yeah, waffling away. Yeah. I never used that Just... until I met you and then I started oh, using okay. it. But, yeah, <laughs> waffling, <laughs> waffling. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next week for episode number 92. And as always, from Anna and I, ride on.